Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and welcome to part 18 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. We're finally ready to move on to our vehicle controller, but in order to do that we're going to need a little bit bigger of a scene. The vehicle controller, the controls are going to be much different. Instead of just, you know, kind of starting and stopping on a dime, pressing our um, directional keys, we're actually going to be steering and accelerating, so we need more room to really be able to maneuver around. And right now our current size scene really isn't doing that. It doesn't, it doesn't afford us that kind of space. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a few of the um, valuable items from the scene, make them into prefabs, and then start a brand new scene where we're going to kind of um, procedurally populate a bigger world for our vehicle once we create it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in our assets and create a new folder and call this prefabs. And inside of here I'm going to put our, I'm not going to put the entire scene, but I'm going to take the obstacle you can drag that right from your uh, hierarchy. I'm also going to grab the input manager as well as the player. We're not going to be using the player, at least not right away in our vehicle scene, but it does have some useful stuff in here so we're going to grab that too. With all of that we can finally leave this basic control scene we created, I'll save it one last time, and create a new scene. Now in here I am going to create a new empty game object and this I'm going to name Scene. Inside of here I'm going to right click and create a 3D object. I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to name this Ground again. But I'm going to make it 10 times as wide on the X and 10 times on the Z axis so that we have this very large space now. Whereas before we were going from basically 5 to 5 on these two axes, now we're going to 50 to 50, so we've got a lot more room to work with. I'm going to quickly save our scene, jump into our scene folder here, and I'll save this as vehicle control. Now, oh and also you'll notice, and I just noticed this, our scene is actually a little bit off of the um, origin, which shouldn't really be an issue, but it never hurts to make sure things are kind of snapped to the origin if you can, so just right click, go to your scene, right click on the transform and hit reset, and that goes back to 000. Ground as well is at 000, so that's well positioned. Now we could drop some of our obstacles onto the scene right from our prefabs folder and kind of manually place them, but it would be nice if we could actually just have Unity do this for us. Um, in addition, it would kind of create, uh, if we do it in a random way, we can actually create a kind of a different world each time that we try out our vehicle controller, which can actually not just make it more interesting as we're kind of play testing it, but also can be useful because it might create situations that we didn't expect, or if we get really used to, you know, driving our vehicle around in one certain situation, it might not handle other situations as well. So this will give it a little bit more of a dynamic nature. So in order to do this, I'm going to save our scene I'm going to go into our scenes, or sorry, our scripts, model scripts. I'm actually going to create a new folder here. Because right now everything we have here is really mostly for our walking controller. So I'm going to create a new folder here called vehicle controls. Open that up and I'm going to create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call this one scene fill. I'm going to drag that onto our, once it finishes loading itself, I'm going to drag it onto our scene object. So now we have it appear here, because this is going to be in charge of taking our obstacle prefab and populating the scene with several copies of it. Save this one last time, and let's jump into Mono Develop to start programming the scene fill script. Zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to get rid of the update function, we're not going to need that. We are going to use the start function, and I'm going to create some public variables first. The first one is going to be a public transform, and this is going to be where we put our um, obstacle prefab. So I'm just going to call this OBS prefab. And before I forget, I'm going to jump right back to Unity, go to the inspector here, and drag this obstacle into that prefab. Nine times out of ten I forget to do that, all of a sudden I'll start playtesting, don't know why it's not working. Save that headache now, 
In addition, I'm going to put in a public integer, which is going to be how many obstacles do we want to populate in our scene. So I'm going to set that, I'm going to call this OBS count. I'm going to set that equal to 50 by default. Oh, not 50F, just 50. This is not a float. Um, but we'll obviously be able to change this in the inspector as well. We could add a range to that in the future once we see, kind of get a feel for how many we're going to want. Right now we'll just keep it as a raw integer. So in our start function, I'm just going to call a function we haven't created yet called fill scene. And then down here we'll create this fill scene function. And all this is going to do is iterate through a loop that's going to say, have I made enough obstacles? If I haven't, continue to instantiate some obstacles. So we're going to do this using a while loop. And we're going to say while, actually first I'm going to create an integer sorry, called OC, and that's going to be equal to our OBS count. I don't want to just use OBS count directly because I don't want to be changing that value in case we were to ever say reset our scene you know, want to create a new set, I don't want to have changed that value. Now I'm going to say while OC is greater than zero, and here's where we're actually going to populate our obstacles. Now, Right now, if we were to run this right now, our game would freeze up because this while loop would run infinitely. So before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure that at the very end of our while loop, I'm going to say OC minus minus, which makes sure that if nothing else, we're at least iterating that number down one each time we go. Now, I could do this with a um, for loop, and that would you know, kind of ensure in the for loop we'd actually be populating that we're iterating this number down and make sure that we're not getting caught in this infinite loop. While loops are a little bit dangerous in that respect that you can much more easily, I find, get caught in an infinite loop with them. However, what um, a while loop lets us do is kind of put in an if-else statement, which is going to be important for making sure that I don't want to overpopulate our starting area of our scene, because if we do that, we might accidentally put something on top of our character or on top of, a, say, the vehicle we want them to get to, things like that. So I'm going to make sure with each iteration that when we create a random location, it's not too close to the center. And so using a while loop is going to let me say, hey, um, if this if this meets these criteria, go ahead and populate it. Otherwise, um, skip this iteration. Don't actually iterate it down. We're going to try again. So that's why I'm using a while loop here instead of, an, instead of a for loop. So what we're going to say, we're going to create two floats. I'm going to create a float called x. And this is going to be equal to random.value. And I'm going to multiply that by 100 and subtract 50. The reason for this is that if we go back to Unity, we see that our scene here goes all the way, and if I, let me grab, let me create an empty just to have something that we can move around here. Our, our ground goes all the way from about negative 50 to positive 50, which is a range of 100 total. And so, and it's f about 50 wide. So what this does is basically says, we're, when we create random dot, dot value, we're getting a number from zero to one, we're multiplying it by 100, which gives us a value from now from 0 to 100, and then the minus 50 simply shifts that back so we're centered on 0. Likewise, I'm going to say float dot z, or float z is equal to random dot value times 100f minus 50. So that's going to give us two random positions that we, we know are somewhere on our ground, um, somewhere on our ground plane. Now we're going to check and say, is this, is the, are these coordinates too, too close to the center? And what I'm going to call too close to the center is if it's between 5 and negative 5 on x and between 5 and negative 5 on z, then it's in that kind of central location that we had in our previous um, scene. And that is where I wanted, I don't want to put anything procedurally in that area. So we'll simply say if x is greater than negative 5 
and x is less than 5. In addition, and I'm just going to copy these because these are the exact same things we're going to want if z also follows these. So if both x and z are between 5 and negative 5, then instead of, then we're going to say continue. And what continue, continue is a little bit of a misleading keyword because what it means is actually skip everything here and then just continue the loop. Um, it's Whereas break would actually dump you out of the loop. So continue is kind of like a, kind of like a break, but lets you continue looping through. It's it's a break for this particular iteration. So if, if the coordinates are too close to the center, then skip this iteration. Otherwise, we do want to actually instantiate our obstacle prefab. And we can put a, quite a bit of information in here as well. We can give it we can give it a parent if we want. We can give it a position and rotation. Even better, we can give it both all of that information. We can choose its position, we can choose some rotation for it, and we can choose a parent for it, which is what we're going to do here. So for the position now, the position is going to be new vector 3, x, 0, z. So we're pulling our x and z from these values we created. And y is just going to be right on the 0 plane because we don't want these floating in the sky. Rotation, we could do a couple of ways. We could put it right in here, but I'm actually going to create rotation outside because it's going to make our it's going to make this method call very clunky otherwise. So I'm going to create a quaternion. We're going to create a quaternion variable outside of the instantiate call, and I'm just going to call this rot for rotation. And it's going to be equal to quaternion dot Euler, which takes. Um, a vector 3 or will take three floats for us and make that into a quaternion value for us, which is really handy. So we can just do that. We'll say 0f random dot value times 360 and 0f for z. So we're only rotating on that y axis, so it's going to be that sort of like a spinning top um, side to side rotation. You could rotate on other angles if you wanted to, might actually make it even more interesting, but um, I'm just strictly using the y-axis. So now we can say we've got the prefab we're instantiating, position, we'll just put in rotation, and then the parent is actually going to be this scene, this object, but we want to make sure it's we're calling the transform of it, not um, this class itself, so we're going to just say transform. And that is all we need to do. Now if we go back to Unity, double check we don't have any errors down here. We've got our scene, we've got our prefab populated, we've got our count set. Um, look more at the scene view, the um, game view because of where the camera's positioned right now might we won't see as fully but we should see now that the obstacles populate all of this outer area of the um, scene kind of at different rotations, so there's a little bit of visual interest, but our central area right in here should remain pretty clear so that when we do have a player or an obstacle or a um, player or a vehicle or other objects, they're not going to get um, crushed by a random obstacle that's being placed. So let's save this and we'll hit play and see what happens. And there we go. We've got quite a few objects here. There's actually uh, more open space than I was expecting, and but we do notice that none of them get so close to the center here that um, we would have any conflicts, which is exactly what we're going for. So what we can do now is I'm actually going to stop this, and I'm going to up this to about 100, because I think that's going to even give us... There we go. That's a pretty good... There's still a little bit of open space in some places, but that can be good if we want to accelerate our vehicle, um, go a little further. And that looks pretty good. Now there's one other thing I noticed, which is that if I come down here, all of our boxes, because we positioned them at um, zero on the Y, are actually being cut in half now. So they're a little bit low, which could be fine, but I'm gonna change that just because I would like to. So we're just gonna change this position. Instead of um, zero for the Y, we'll change that to one. And that should, let's see here. Or should I have put it? Nope, perfect. And that now puts our boxes um, 
positioned so that they are now actually setting right on top of the ground instead of kind of cutting halfway through it. Now you will also notice there are some situations where boxes are overlapping one another. We're, I'm okay with that right now. Eventually if we want to make it so that, you know, if you had say like um, shipping containers that you didn't want to be overlapping each other in the real world, then we could certainly look at ways of avoiding those sorts of collisions. But right now, they just add some more visual interest, and I think this works just fine for us. So now that we've got this scene set up, we can start building our uh, vehicle character, understanding how the camera is going to work with this character, and um, then start putting in the controls for it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.